Broadcasting from the commodity capital of the world, Zurich, Switzerland, this is Insider's Guide to Energy. Insider's Guide to Energy, ETRM Mini Series, brought to you by Fedectus, where post trading matters and falls an independent management and consulting beauty, creating impacts for clients and markets. Welcome to Insider's Guide to Energy. I'm your host, Chris Sass, and today we are taking the next step in our ETRM educational mini-series. Uh, with me, as usual, is Martin Hiller. Martin, welcome back to the show. Hi. Hi, all. And today, Martin and I are fortunate enough to have our guest. We have Beacon with us today, and Richard Jefferson from Beacon is our guest today. Richard, welcome to the show. Thank you. Nice to be here. So Richard, maybe it makes sense before we kick off on the show, just what is your role at Beacon and, and tell us a little bit of who Beacon is. Sure. So I'm the Chief Financial Officer at Beacon. Um, Beacon is a scale-up fintech uh, based out of New York. We're seven years old at the moment. Um, we provide the future of financial markets in, in the cloud. And what that means is a variety of building blocks for developers and quants um, used across financial markets, so across commodity clients, energy clients, but also asset managers, hedge funds, uh, and investment banks uh, and others. Um, we very much believe that we have a valuable solution and uh, we give a lot more control to our clients than uh, perhaps black box systems do. Um, so yeah, delighted to be here. Well, fantastic. So the ETRM mini series, we, we've been talking to many vendors down the road. And one of the reasons we created the mini series, as I told you in the pre-show, is we've seen a lot going on. We see a lot of vendors. You just talked about being, uh, you know, kind of a cloud-based platform, which I think is a, a change from many of the legacy ETRM vendors that, that I've talked to or the, the historical ETRM uh, way it was done. So in your opinion, what's happening in the market? Do we need new players? Why is so much money and why is it such a crowded space today? What's happening? Sure. So I think my, my perspective on this comes a lot from my time at Deutsche Bank where I ran the commodities group there. I think yeah, what's what's exciting about the commodities markets is is they constantly change, the supply and demand is constantly shifting, and therefore the interaction between commodity curves constantly changes as well. And so, for a dedicated oil trader, for example, that is only looking at WTI, um, you know, they may find that what they built several years ago to be quite a, an insular system doesn't scale as the marketplace changes. And obviously, we have COP twenty six happening in in Glasgow at the moment. The, the relationships across commodities, particularly within it, within energy that we've seen so much this year with weather, with supply and demand, with a lack of storage, I think constantly makes any ETRM system open to the need to change. Um, so whether that's pre-trade analytics, whether it's risk management and stress, um, I think it's quite difficult to, to build a system that encompasses a very narrow market as well as the global system of, of commodities quite well. Um, and so I think that you know, it, it's it's unsurprising that as the dynamics change, as the generation stack changes, as the demand um, characteristics change, it, it's it's not particularly surprising that um, that traders are constantly looking for a new edge. They're constantly looking for a way to differentiate themselves. Um, and you know, at the heart of that is either very good understanding of supply and demand, so pre-trade analytics, which is a huge amount of data, um, or it's around risk management, which is generally around either the assets and the trades in your portfolio or understanding how those might change over time. So you know, I find it I find it unsurprising that there's a constant need for, for innovation there. So Rich, uh, that's definitely quite interesting. And you mentioned a keyword uh, that uh, pretty much from my perspective um, describes it well. So changes, changes drive um, the way how traders work, the whole um, industry is working. And uh, from my point of view, of course, the biggest change and the biggest challenge at the same time are renewables that um, energy suppliers and production companies have to um, handle well. So in that context, uh, can you see that uh, business models and operating models of your clients are changing? Yeah, um, 
in, in a couple of key ways. I so said very broadly, there's there's an ESG narrative, um, and so a, a need to understand one's carbon footprint and an ESG score. Um, being able to do that relies on having the capability to look across many different aspects of, of your business. Um, and so a horizontal platform rather than vertical single asset platforms work very well for that. Um, more specifically to your, to your point with, you know, within energy and within renewables, absolutely, as I already mentioned, you know, the, the change of inputs for supply and demand you know, very much is, is, is happening you know, with, with, with the change in renewables. So uh, again, if you go back 10 years, you know, really it was looking at just the carbon prices as, as an input. You know, now you need to understand weather, you need to understand storage, you need to understand the price of carbon, you need to understand what the demand is as, as, as well. Um, and so it's got more complicated um, and that obviously requires a more versatile um, analytic based system. Yeah, definitely. Prices are going a little bit crazy currently and especially for CO certificates. Uh, but in general, I mean, if I look at um, clients or, or um, production companies, uh, utilities, in, renewable is, of course, changing their short term way of trading, but also they engaging a lot with PPAs across Europe. I mean, they are strongly in the rise in Germany and PPAs, especially from a contract management point of view or deal life cycle is of course quite different from standard products um, they also come with goos at the end and as you mentioned uh, co2 certificates also play a big role when it comes to esg or in general becoming more green so how important is the energy transition for your clients and how do you speak and what do you specifically offer to manage this transition especially in the context of managing those non-standard contracts like PPAs, GOOs, uh, CO2 certificates, etc. Yeah, absolutely. So at the heart of, of Beacon Platform is the concept of buy and build. So what we offer to our clients is, is the ability to extend our platform. And, and if you take storage or you take PPAs or you take any of the complicated assets that, that you were talking about, Different participants want to model those in, in their own unique way, and they absolutely should. What we try to provide is we try to provide good use cases and good reference material for our clients to be able to build their own capabilities, but crucially to integrate it with the rest of the platform. So what we, you know, what we feel is, is unscalable is for a client to build a single Excel model with a, with a, you know, with, with a great um, quant and then not have that integrated to the rest of their, their trading and risk management platform. What Beacon offers is a strong best in class capability in the, the frequently traded contracts, um, some reference material to extend. So for example, you know, we've, we've, we've done some work in the past on, on gas storage. There are many different ways to, to model gas storage. Um, Neil Palmer runs our client engineering team in, in Europe and has spent quite a lot of time at various conferences talking about different different ways of, of modeling gas storage. And so we have some reference material there where our clients can look at what we've done and, and look at uh, modeling it through derivatives or look at you know, other, other ways of modeling it, but then they can implement their own models. The, the bit that's different for us is that we're entirely cloud native, so it runs very fast. We make sure that it is connected to the rest of the platform so that you can include your hedges, your other derivatives, um, your physical positions into the portfolio. And then when you want to run stress tests or VAR or other analysis on, on that portfolio, it works hopefully you know, very, you know, very well and, and seamlessly across all of that. So you know, very much a case of buy and build on top. We provide the Beacon development, Developer Network so that you over time can, can build on, uh, on the capabilities and the knowledge of a, of a wide variety of implementation partners as well as Beacon and potentially other clients as well. Um, but you are in control as a client that you have your own reference material, your own models, the, the ability to switch between different models, which we think is very important as well. And you know, we can come back to, to why that's important later on perhaps. Um, but crucially then you, know, you, you have that, that best of both worlds where you, you have a connectivity between the complex and the repeatable products, um, but the flexibility to, to build, build your own models and to change those models as well. So so does a customer, if, if I was going to onboard with Beacon today, I'm, if, you know, I assume we've got an existing platform, 
So do I get a vanilla platform that I start with and then build on top of that with a toolkit that you give me? Or do I not see value until I start building? Is, is, is there core functionality that, that I would see value out of the box before before I develop anything? Yes, you would. You would. So we have, um, you know, we have a very strong client relationship team, client engineering team that would work with you to, to figure out exactly what your use case is. Um, for many of our clients, they have portfolios of existing trades, and we would work with them to make sure that the market data is connected, that the trades are, are connected, and, and all that sort of you know, day one proof of value works. Um, and then what we would expect you would, would, would have is you would have developers and you would have quants that want to build the more complex um, to integrate with that. And that can be a you know, multi-stage process if you want it to be. You can do that quite delicately if you if you're already managing um, some physical assets on the side on a spreadsheet you know we can look to integrate those uh, over time or you can you can build the model directly inside beacon uh, with our help or uh, or, or with uh, you know, with the help of of, of other implementation partners if, if that's what you want to so yes you you, you, you do get quite a lot out of the box um, and you know by no means is, is that complete for all clients either the reason that most clients choose beacon is that ability to extend it. Um, so we're not, you know, we're, we're not just uh, a black box vendor. You know, we're very much uh, you know, transparent source code, and, and therefore, yeah, you'll be looking to, to extend that and, and make it your own because that's your edge as a as a trader or a participant in the market. So, in in terms of extending the platform, the Beacon platform, what is the the scripting language that developers must be capable to to code in? Uh, so we use Python. Okay, and would it be possible to also, I mean, develop code programming language agnostic and deploy it uh, then in the Beacon platform? Um, my understanding is we have some integrations with other programming languages, but I'm not a developer, so I'm not, I'm not okay. going to get too much okay. into, into the detail uh, on that, I'm afraid. Quite a technical question there. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Um, and uh, I mean, how does, uh, how does it look like uh, in case, or does actually Beacon solutions still exist on on premise or is it completely already cloud based and cloud native it's completely cloud native where we're relatively agnostic as to which cloud provider um but mm -hmm. uh, there's there's you know we, we we currently don't have any clients that, that are on premise and we we would strongly recommend uh taking beacon in the cloud because we think it works works best that way yeah 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 and how does the interfacing look like do you pro do you offer a standard api or how can any other ecosystem be connected um, so, I mean, the, what's, what's interesting about, you know, all of our clients is they all have their own unique setups. Um, so part of the, part of the process of, of being onboarded with Beacon is, is to work with our client engineering teams and our project managers and figure out what, what the hookups are that, that you need, you know, as I mentioned for market data, for um, potentially fundamental data, for trade data, and also for any reporting as, as well. So, um, you know, we have quite a few of those, of those hookups and you know, no doubt there are others that that can and will be built uh, either by us or, or by our clients. So where where is your current customer base mostly geography? Is it North America, Europe? Where, where do you have your, your core base of customers today? Our majority are North America, which is probably no great surprise given that we were founded uh, in, in the New York area. Um, but we also have a lot of global clients as well. So we, you know, we're very pleased that we've got a, a strong story across sector and also of, of global clients. We have a footprint in, in Asia Pacific. We also have a strong footprint uh, in EMEA as well. Um, and you know, what, what we find is that you know, many of the challenges faced by uh, current and potential clients are, are shared challenges. Um, and, and so we think that you know, having a strong cloud native analytic platform that can be extended, um, you know, we think that resonates uh, across multiple asset classes as well as uh, you know, within and across the, the energy and commodity sectors. Okay, coming back, uh, Rich, to, to one distinct question, a bit on, on renewables and uh, PPAs again, since I, I stumbled across that in the project as well. And you mentioned that um, you can not just um, provide the, the platform that can be extended and um, built on top, but do you provide also models, let's say, for pricing and risk management of PPAs and GOs, whatever comes with that PPA business? Um we have some, we don't have all of them. Um, and one of the reasons that we don't have all of them is that we think that we have a pricing library for 
many different types of derivatives in particular um, that that are that are commonly used and commonly agreed upon. Um, as I mentioned, we've done some work around around gas storage in the past. We've we've looked at some uh, some physical power as well. Um, and you know what we what we like to to believe is that any model can be can be implemented in Beacon relatively straightforwardly. So we are not uniquely an ETRM business. You know, we are a, a cross asset business. Um, we have a team of quants that work to develop models that we think are very strong models. Um, but we also don't necessarily believe that our models have to be used or are the best. I think the versatility of our platform is the ability to, to switch models either from one beacon model to another beacon model or to implement um, you know, your, your own models. And you know, we've seen that through, uh, through work that we've done around FRTB, for example, um, where clients want to plug in their own models, but also then reference other models. Um, we've also seen that um, last year when WTI prices went, went negative and, and we were able to prove um, the ability to switch from a log normal model that wasn't switch, you know, that wasn't working towards either a Bekelian model or a shifted log normal um, and to be able to, to run sensible risk very quickly. Um, so I realize I didn't directly answer much of your question, but you know, it's, it's that ability to, to change the plumbing um, that's our strength and, and we're not specifically um, a PPA modeling team. Yeah, see, I see. And how difficult or easy is it to change models at the end? It's the model within the, the Beacon platform or is it developed outside and deployed in there? How does this change of model and development work? Um, so our platform is built for quants. So we very much have in mind the type of user that I, that I think that you're talking about. So the quant that is working for the utility or, or, or the, the energy trader who has built a, a very robust model. The, the reason that Beacon exists is that often quants are great at building models and great at understanding the trade that is being priced today. And they're less good at putting that into production. And the translation problem that can happen when a quant built spreadsheet mutates over time mm -hmm. and they become you know, many tens or hundreds of those trades. Maybe the, maybe the quant leaves, maybe that is then given to the tech team to, to make more robust. That's exactly the problem that, that we believe that we, that we help to solve. So the model would be written in the client domain. Um, so it would be written in, in Python in the client domain owned therefore by the client. Um, and so unique to the client, if, assuming that the client wants to keep it unique. Um, and, and then, and then, and then deployed as part of the overall beacon platform. So, you know, you could then call on, on the model for, you know, for your complex asset, just as, just as easily as you could call on, on, on any other model. Um, and if you had you know, one or more of those models implemented, you could, you could switch between the two pretty, pretty seamlessly. So what I'm hearing you, you talk about the models, you're talking about the switching, um, in the earlier part of the conversation, you mentioned that you have a fairly su large support organization to help help the development of these models and import them. So talk about the, the customer journey. So they're, they're, they're coming on board or, or most of your customers signing up where you're having a consultant that sits with them in the beginning, or, or is it a uh, virtual support or what kind of support is onboarding these quants and helping them get their models implemented yeah. and things like that? No, it's a, it's a, it's a great question. Um, what we, what we generally try to do is, is we try, we try to, to navigate that first period of, of, of time with the client. And that could either be through a proof of concept project with the client before they sign a long-term license. So we all understand what does good look like? What does Beacon provide? What do you need to provide as a client? Um, or it can be a shorter proof of value um, project. And then crucially, one, once a license is signed, you know, we, we want to make sure that, you know, that we deliver time to value first portfolio in as short a shorter time as we possibly can. So we'll, you know, we'll work with, with the client um, you know, through our own project management and client engineering teams to really understand what is the portfolio, what is the use case, what is the client looking to get out of that. We have Beacon University where we provide training for, for our clients. Um, we have a, a certification program for, um, for, for professional services firms so that if, uh, if a client wants to engage a professional services firm, they can see that they are accredited by, by Beacon to, uh, to know what they're talking about and therefore be, a, be of more value, hopefully. Um, and, uh, and obviously, depending on, on the type of client, there'll be various, uh, you know, various video training and, and hands-on um, you know, live training that we can provide for the quants and for the developers. Um, and it very much varies from, from one client to another. Some are 
very aware of the type of platform that we have built um, because they may have had similar use cases in the past. Some are, uh, are, are very new to the platform. And so there's a, a different level of, of training. And then, of course, we have 24-hour customer support and, uh, and client success people to, to help with, uh, with, with individual clients uh, as, as, their, as their journey changes over time. So let's theoretically, I, I hire a quant that's got great Python skills that they, mm-hmm. that was kind of a job requirement. How, how big is it an effort to, to get them educated in your platform? How, how much time I'm spending someone that's fairly capable with Python and they, they know their modeling and they know their, their job well, how much uniqueness is it to get, get them up? Um, I don't know how well I can answer that. So I can, let me give you an example of, you know, over the course of, of the pandemic, Beacon has hired something like 80 people. And, you know, the journey that we've, we've had to onboard our own people is the one that we have the, the most visibility on. And some of those people have come from, you know, very different backgrounds without Python skills and, and without, uh, you know, without necessarily knowing what, what the platform does. And you know, we'd, we'd certainly measure their onboarding time in, you know, in weeks rather than, than multiple months. Um, that's their day job, so it may be a, a slightly slightly shortened period um, for clients. You know, they often have other things to do as as, as well. Um, but you know, we very much want to make sure that we're providing what what we can, so that you know you can be self guided, um, that you've got the material available, both written as well as video um, journeys, and then um, you know the ability to contact us on, on a live basis uh, if if you need to as well, whether that's for you know, specific help or. Or whether it's for for questions, and a lot of the support that we provide is is questions rather than bugs. You know, it's how do I do this? You know, how can you help me? Um, and that's why we see the the developer network being you know being crucial to to the success of the platform because you know many many of uh, you know many of the challenges faced by clients have, have been uh, have been you know experienced by by other clients uh, or other professional services firms as well. So. You mentioned a lot of, um, of course, modeling development, uh, which is one key strength of the Beacon platform. Uh, but if I think now of um, a quant developing a model, no matter if it's in Python or in any other scripting language, there are right ways to do it and wrong ways to do it, um, especially more from a governance point of view and, and coding point of view. So how does it work then with Beacon? Do you, um, once the, the license contract is signed, do you hand out the Beacon platform empty and then the, the developers have to go on the IDE or maybe via GitLab um, developing code and uh, come up with a code structure or, or a design of a code structure? Are they then completely on their own or do you also have uh, some people that help at the end quants to design a certain, a certain code structure to make sure that what they do is at the long run still maintainable? And is not at the end a big jungle of code. Um, so we we certainly have people that will work with clients to provide ideas around structure and suggestions on how best to use Beacon. Um, and you know, we have a lot of commodity experience across Beacon as well. So we you know, we think that that's valuable. Ultimately, of course, you know how how you implement your own models and, and how you implement your own your own code is, is a matter for, for you as a client with you know with your governance structure and, and, and your regulator. So um, you know our, our primary role is to make sure the platform does what it is supposed to do. Um, and there's a there's, there's a delineation there um, in terms of clear responsibility. But absolutely you know, we, we, we want to provide you know advice where where it's going to be useful and uh, and we, you know, we have you know quite a lot of experience of, of having done this at different organizations. Um, for you know, different individuals across Beacon, so um, yeah, I think we've got some some uh, some good advice to to share. All right, so I, I, I'm not going to beat you up with more technical questions because you told me you're not you're not a developer already. Um, how about visualization of the data and reporting and things like that? How does it work in your system? What do you do to to, to extract the information and make it easy to to use? Describe that a little bit. What, um, it's a pretty important part of the of the platform. There are there are obviously lots lots of different ways that you can can pull data and, and analyze data and, and visualize data, um, and you know, de- depending depending on the need, of course, some of that is graphical and some of that is is in tables. So we you know, we run fairly traditional looking risk ladders and, and scenario analysis that will produce tables of numbers. Um, we also you know have have 
the ability to put a lot of that sort of stuff in into into more graphical stuff. So if I think about um, you know some of our um, XVA modeling, for example, you know we have, we have some nice charts that, that come with that that shows you know not just a number, but what does the distribution look like? Um, we've we've looked at some stress testing as well, similarly where you get some some graphical output, um, and we provide um, you know various different building blocks so that you can you can you can change that and, and make it make it suitable for, for you um, so again it's, it's it's pretty versatile um, but we're not preaching that there is one way to display data or, or, or to analyze data um, you know what we, again what we want to do is to make it pretty easy um, particularly for a trader user so if I think about you know my own journey as a as an FX trader and as a commodities trader you know the ability to very quickly say okay I want to run my risk ladder 10% wide rather than 5% wide, or I want to run my time horizon out by you know, three, four weeks rather than the traditional sort of two or three days to see how the portfolio might change. You know, that at the heart is at the heart of, of the capabilities that, that we give. So some of those are very easily tweaked by the front office. Some of that is more around, you know, building, uh, building applications uh, your, yourself if there's a, you know, particularly a, a graphical um, representation that, that you want uh, uh, to, to use for your, for your output. Great. So let's talk a bit about automation. Um, what, what I can clearly see, and I think that's not a, a secret all over the energy trading industry, is that short-term trading gets more and more volatile and a lot faster than before. Of course, driven again by the renewables. Um, but that brings clearly new challenges for short-term traders, uh, but also for systems that are, of course, used by traders and also mid-office risk at the end. Yeah. So, so how, how do you see this development and what do you specifically maybe offer to your clients to overcome those challenges in short-term trading? Um, I'm not sure how much is, is specific, really. I mean, we, you know, again, we're a, we're a cloud native platform, so speed um, of individual calculation as well as of, of portfolios of calculations you know, is certainly something that we look to optimize for. Um, you know, we, mm -hmm. we have, we have, a variety of, of, of clients with with portfolios from you know very very complex um, portfolios to very very large portfolios and, and so we're constantly taking feedback on how does how does the, the platform perform in real life um, for those sorts of platforms and in different market conditions um, I think there's no there's no simple answer to to the question that, that you pose but volatility per se is is not necessarily a problem you know we have um, a couple of clients that are using beacon platform for crypto assets incredibly volatile um we obviously have yeah. clients that are using it for for energy and have used it for, for energy both in very low volatile prices as well as very high volatile prices and um one of our co-founders wrote a blog around um gamestop and the incredible volatility that you thought that you saw okay. from that equity and how beacon platform uh you know could have been uh, applicable for uh, for a very fast moving asset so i think price volatility per se is not necessarily uh, an inhibitor and again that flexibility in the, the risk modeling that you have, um, you know, is, is really core to being successful in those environments. I see, I see, great. Maybe to, to outline one explicit um, example and what I can see from short-term traders, what they need more and more um, nowadays, a real-time position management tool. Yep. Of course, to see at any point in time, what is your positions? Uh, do I need to get active? Do I need, need to close physical positions? Do I need to hedge? And so on. So. Does uh, the Beacon platform offer a specific uh, feature for position management, or is it again at the end up to the client to develop such a functionality and feature within Beacon, or maybe even connect it to, to some existing uh, real-time position management tools outside? Uh, no, we have some real-time capabilities, um, and again, different clients are looking for different things. Whether whether one means real-time live updates or on-demand risk, there's a there's a difference between the two and you know some clients are looking for risk when they want it rather than um a constantly changing screen in, in, in front of you um but yes we have we have some of those capabilities and again we would work with the client to to make sure that you know, we're, we're delivering from a platform perspective every, everything that they need in order to manage their their, their risk uh, in a timely manner okay cool still in the context of automation but maybe now in a bit of a uh, from a different angle i think what is also on the rise is automated trading or algo trading um, in especially short term gas and power trading but also on the curve i think more and more traders are trying to establish and build algos 
Um, but I, that brings again, from my point of view, quite some challenges. I think yeah, it's not very advisable to, to just develop your own um, algo strategy on your local machine and then try to run it on an order book level. I think this will ensure for sure at some point fail. Um, so in that context, um, does, does the Beacon platform offer something specifically for algo trading? Uh, let's say some, some given framework, like a backtesting framework that um, can be used for backtesting strategies that are coded and developed on the platform, or maybe some, some framework that allows monitoring those um, strategies if they run uh, well or if they fail. I think that's quite important for risk management. Yeah. So maybe in that context, what does Beacon Platform offer there? The answer is partly. Um, we are not an execution platform or an execution system. And so our clients do not write algos on the Beacon platform to then deploy into a live system. So that, that, that doesn't happen. We okay. do have a very strong um, pre-trade and um, trade analysis um, application. And so it's perfectly possible to run uh, an algo type um, mechanism through, through that and see how it how it has performed in the past and therefore draw some conclusions as to how it might perform in the future. And you can, you, know, you can add in various different slippage uh, around, around that if, if you wanted to as well. So yeah, back testing is very much part of, uh, of the beacon platform, but we, uh, as, as I mentioned, we're, we're not an execution system. So, uh, you, you would then need to take that, uh, take that trade idea or that, 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 that algo and, and put it somewhere and link it to, to execution system. Beacon would then receive those trades from, uh, from whatever venue you executed on. So maybe that would help me understand a little bit. So you've talked a bit about being a platform. You're not just an ETRM vendor, so you have a platform. So who are your ideal customers and, and how do I end up a, as you as my ETRM vendor? Sure. Um, so our ideal clients are clients who have frustrated quants and curious developers. So we, we, we want clients who want to develop their edge through technology um, that often have needs that are not entirely vanilla. Um, and so if you think about traditional vendors, traditional vendors tend to solve 90% of the problems pretty well. Um, and if that's just what you trade, if you only trade very simple products, then you probably don't need to extend a platform. And there are some very strong vendors that, that provide those solutions where our ideal clients are, are, are where they, they have an edge either through their franchise, through their assets, or through their capabilities where they want to do something different. And so that could be um, financial transmission rights in, in North America, for example. It could be through um, complex modeling of, of assets. So whether it's a complex derivative, that, which could be non-commodities, uh, whether it's a cross asset basket or, or ETF that needs to be decomposed, um, or whether it's the sort of you know, gas and, and power assets that, that you talked about, generally those things don't fit very well into traditional vendors because this is just not a big enough market to build a very strong product in, in one very, very narrow thing. So Beacon you know, provides those building blocks to say, look, here's a really strong platform that manages a whole host of trades really well, multiple asset classes, multiple assets within the commodities complex. And what we provide to you is a really strong pre-trade platform, a really strong um, post-trade risk analysis platform, the ability to build your own models and hook those up in, in a pretty seamless way. And so you know, we're looking to give you versatility. We're looking to make sure it's incredibly professionally um, implemented so that you don't have that friction around um, regulators or compliance. Um, but ultimately we're looking to give you the control to, to, you know, to, to monetize your, your edge. Okay. And so that helps me a little bit. Um, now you, you keep saying you're cloud native and, 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 you know, the cloud has gotten to be the buzzword du jour. Yes. Um, but one of the things I wonder about, I'd like to hear more about that, but I also wonder, you said you have multinational customers. And yeah. so one of the challenge when you get, you mentioned regulatory kind of concerns in, in different markets. So how does that work? I, you know, when you're in the cloud, I mean, it's, Sounds fantastic until I have someone that's got a European footprint, an Asia footprint, and maybe a North American footprint, and I got different requirements. How are you managing that for your customers? Or is that um, not so, so again, that's a that's a combination of of our advice around how to set up a cloud environment, and and many of our clients have Beacon deployed in their own cloud environments, and therefore it becomes their regulatory 
um, compliance and also their ownership of, the, of that regulation as well. Um, so that, you know, that actually shifts the control towards the client and, and they have uh, not only the transparency, but the control around, around how, that, how that works. Um, so and- that, that brings up a question. Hold, hold on. A so when you say their own environment, does that mean that you're giving them like virtual machines or is it truly a cloud native app? I guess, I guess maybe I do need to understand what you mean by cloud when you say that. Like, you know, what, um, so what does a cloud native app need to be? So, so, so a client would, would have a, an environment in AWS or Azure, for example, we would deploy Beacon platform into their, their cloud account and they would then pipe the, the market data and the trades also into their cloud environment. So our responsibility is to make sure that the platform works um, but effectively then they have a, a, a ring fenced um, cloud environment that they own um, that they can ensure you know, meets their regulatory requirements for, for whatever it may be. And obviously every client is very different. We have you know, investment bank clients who are incredibly highly regulated. We have some some hedge funds and some energy clients who are differently regulated from, from that. Um, and you know, obviously we'll, we'll work with, uh, with, with each client to make sure that uh, you know, what we're providing does what it's supposed to do and it, and it has all of the um, the failovers and the BCP that, that, that needs to go with that. And, you know, we have um, you know, security engineers and platform engineers that are, and cloud engineers that will, again, work with, with, with clients to, to make sure that that does what it needs to do. But it's, uh, it, yeah, it's obviously different for lots of different clients. Yeah, no worries. And then, so you, you've mentioned quite a bit about the support staff. How big is your company, just out of curiosity? Um, so we're about 150 people um, all, all in now globally. Um, which, uh, you know, which has grown substantially over the last couple of years. Um, and, you know, we're, we're across the globe in, uh, you know, predominantly in New York, London, and Tokyo, um, but also some other presence around the world as well. In your team of developers, where's your development team mainly set? Um, again, in, in those three main centers, um, so Tokyo, okay. London, and, and New York. Um, and we also work with, uh, with some partners in India and in Poland as well. In terms of hosting and support, uh, do you provide the full hosting and support package for the solution that runs at the end, maybe also on the cloud environment of the client? Um, so again, it slightly depends on the client there as to whose account mm-hmm. it is and whether we are supporting just the Beacon code and the Beacon platform or whether we're supporting something more than that. So we have obviously service level agreements with with, with different tiers, with different clients, depending on how much they, they want to support themselves, how much they need our help, um, and, and how much they want to pay for that potentially as, as well. So, um, but yeah, we have 20, you know, 24 seven, um, support, um, uh, you know, across, uh, across the globe for, for the platform, um, and, uh, you know, people on hand to help with, uh, you know, with questions around, uh, around analytics, for example, as well, which is, uh, you know, not necessarily support, but it's sort of you know, more, more question and answer mm. type stuff. Okay, so that, that means that the support is always granted no matter where the platform runs, if, um, if it's in in uh, the Beacon cloud or in the client cloud, support is always given, of course, part probably of the license model. Um, we'll we'll, we'll always provide support and that support will be will be tailored according to, to how, the, how the account yeah. is, is set up and what the client wants. Yeah, and the hosting, I guess, also depends then where the platform runs, if it's the client cloud or if it's at the end the beacon cloud yes and, and if it's if it's if it's the client then there are some things only the client can do and there are some things that, that, that yeah, sure. the beacon yeah. can, can provide advice yeah. on but again it's a you know very much a relationship with uh, with our customer success team and making sure that uh, you know everyone everyone's clear on, on you know, what we can do and how we can help okay so thanks I'm, I'm getting a pretty good picture i think of what beacon does today from our conversation um, I get the modeling, I get your kind of your, your, your target customer. So what's evolving or changing? So you talked about a crowded space. We said there was a lot going on. Mm-hmm. So you, you kind of gave me the trends of what's happening today. Do you see a direction or what's the future hold for you? Where, where are you guys going? Where, what's changing or evolving from your vantage point moving forward? Uh, well, lots of things are, are, are changing and you know, one of the things that really excites us is is the growth that we're that we're seeing. You know, we, we we continue to see very very strong growth in in our licenses and our, our license revenue. We continue to see a lot of interest from external participants. We just closed a, a Series C that, that you, you might have seen. Um, so, you know, we think there's a huge amount of upside um, for more clients to use the platform that we already have, but also to continue to 
to develop solutions for shared pain. And, and really, again, that's what, what Beacon is trying to do is, is to is to provide solutions for, for shared pain, whether that's through automation or whether it's through improved toolkits. Yeah, we, we see a lot of that specifically within within commodities. Yeah, you know, we've already talked a little bit about the change in supply and demand, which obviously constantly changes. But you know, if you think about some of the extreme volatility that we've had over the last couple of years, some of it's driven by weather, some of it's driven by carbon, some of it's driven by lack of storage and physical infrastructure. Um, some of it's a combination of the two. For example, ERCOT last uh, uh, last winter with uh, you know, with the, the outages that, that were there, um, and often that's requiring very nimble risk management, nimble analysis of, of what's happening, and potentially the ability to, to quite quickly switch from, let's say, a one or two year VAR model back to something that is more interesting and, and more reasonable. Um, so, you know, we've, we, we like to think that, you know, that, that, that sort of versatility is, is very much at the heart of, of the platform that, we're, that we've built and that we continue to develop. Um, we obviously hear a lot about data as well and, and what clients want to do with data and large volumes of data. Um, you know, we're not necessarily a, a data science platform specifically, but you know, we provide you know, lots, of, uh, you know, lots of capabilities around large amounts of data. And again, if that's um, pre-trade fundamental analysis in, in commodities or whether that's uh, post-trade portfolio analysis and, uh, and stress testing and capital allocation, um, you know, I, th I think there's there's no shortage of, of challenges out there, and uh, you know we'll, we'll try and meet as many of those as, as we can, or provide the the tools for our clients to help themselves. I think that's a good uh, buzzword to, to help themselves. I think that requires also, as you mentioned, quite some understanding on coding Python and also how to set up um, maybe not the platform itself, but how to code and on the platform and maintain it. And I can imagine there are also quite some clients still out in the market that are a bit reluctant to code themselves and help themselves. So what is your view on, on, on those client sector or client share? And does that get smaller and smaller over the years now? Um, well, I, th I guess it depends on, on the type of client. There are certainly clients that want to own a system that does exactly what they want it to do and they want the provider to be on the hook for all of all of the aspects of that um, and i think for some clients that's that's the right the right path for them to choose there are plenty of others though that, that find that their you know, their edge and i've mentioned edge quite a few times but their you know that their, their edge is is either in how they trade those markets or in the types of products that they trade or in the distribution of of, of those of those products and you know, the, the more that the more that you have an edge, the more that you have a uniqueness. And if you have a uniqueness, you probably want your technology stack to um, to, to to replicate that uniqueness. And you know, there, of course, is, is the quid pro quo. If the more the more the more that's unique, the more you should want to own it yourself. We obviously again, I mentioned this earlier. You know, we we work with quite a few professional services firms who can help with implementations. They can help with with building uh, more and more capabilities. And we expect that that will evolve next year for us into an app store um, and so you know, for example I can, I can certainly envisage a scenario you know later next year or, or, or beyond where there is a gas storage app in our app store so if anyone has taken the, the, the platform to, to trade commodities they might want to license that gas storage model from a third party provider that is accredited by Beacon so you know it works and it'll provide a pretty good model and a pretty good implementation of that particular product and that is certainly a way that we expect our platform to evolve over time um, because it may not be that it's the model itself that is the thing that you find valuable you know it may be you know your particular asset or the particular market that you're operating in so you know we're, we're really excited about the, the opportunity to to grow that with our partners and with our clients um and uh, you know i mean hopefully for us that'll, that'll really take off but also hopefully for our clients that'll give them more choice um, of, uh, of, of, other, of other models and other products that, uh, that integrate with the platform. So are you doing anything to seed the App Store? Because, I mean, obviously, you know, they, they go by the number of customers you have and things like that. So do you have a few key companies that you're working with right now to kind of seed it to get it started, the environment? Or how yeah, we do. Work? So we, we, will, we will seed it with some of our own apps um, that we think are, are good. Um, we're working with some professional services firms, as, as I mentioned as well, and, and they have some ideas uh, as, as well. And, um, you know, we're looking forward to, to talking much more about the app store in 2022. Pretty cool. 
Martin, anything else you want to, to cover? Not for the moment. Thanks, Chris. So before we move into the speed round, um, do you want to, Rich, maybe bring things together and, you know, kind of we're, we're going to go into, you know, the 10 questions here in a minute, but maybe pull together your thoughts from we've been a little bit all over the place. So give you just a minute or two to kind of position your solution and, and you know, kind of bring it together as one position statement. Yeah, thank you. Um, I suppose to reiterate what I, what I said at the beginning, you know, Beacon is the future of financial markets on the cloud. We see ourselves as providing a toolkit for quants and developers at interesting clients around the world who want to be able to solve their own problems. We think that we have the capabilities and the nous across our team globally to be, to be able to help clients. Um, we think that we have a platform that allows clients to control their own destiny. And ultimately, we think that by reducing friction, by helping clients with integration, by giving them the versatility and control of their pre-trade as well as their post-trade risk management, um, you know, we think that Beacon is a, is, is a, is a pretty compelling um, proposition. And, and it's not just that, that we think that, you know, the growth that we've seen um, from our annual recurring revenue for the last three or four years has been about 100% plus per year. We've just closed a Series C, as I mentioned. So we've got external validation that what we're doing is, is along the right lines. Um, and you know, we're delighted to be able to solve complex problems um, for clients across the world in a variety of different asset classes. We think that our strengths uh, are by being cloud native, as I've already mentioned, and by, by, being, uh, by being multiple asset, multiple jurisdiction. You know, we think that that gives us uh, you know, a really good grounding to, to work with some of the most interesting clients uh, going forwards. Well, I, I look forward to interacting with you professionally and with Beacon um, as this continues to grow. But what we're going to do now is we're going to switch gears and go into our, our speed round. And the way this round is going to work is we have about 10 questions. We're going to alternate back and forth. Just short answers is fine. We ask every vendor that's on the, the program or on the mini series about these same questions. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and kick off if you're ready. Okay. Um, all right. So in your opinion, will the number of vendors for ETRM solutions shrink or expand in the future? I don't have a very strong opinion on that. I, I, I think the barrier to entry is reasonably high, um, but I don't necessarily think it's going to consolidate to a very small number either. So how many deals per minute must a modern ETM system today be capable to import? as many as the client needs to be able to risk manage. And so, so what I mean by that is that different, different clients have a, have a different, different need to import a, a vast number of, of, of trades. So, um, you know, for example, if I think about, you know, my history of trading foreign exchange, you know, on, on the first Friday of the month around non-farm payrolls, you may need to import hundreds of thousands of trades, but you don't need to do very much with them apart from just get them in the system and, and know the position. Um, whereas other times you need to you know, fully analyze lots of complex options. So uh, so the answer is lot, but it also depends. Yeah, I think the context to, to see that question is in short-term trading where you have maybe from Argos coming some some standard uh, deals that uh, have been concluded. Um, so maybe in that context, uh, if you have an opinion, short-term trading, gas uh, and power, do you see that clients are today already importing thousands of deals or hundreds of deals? What do you think um, must the ETM system today in that context, if you have an opinion in that context, be capable to import? Um, I, I, I don't have a strong opinion, I'm afraid. I mean, to, I, okay. I would expect you would want to, no you, you, you would certainly want to, to, to bring in thousands and, and bring them in very, very quickly, but it depends on the type of trade and how you can stack them and get yep. them in. Okay, thanks. All right, so what commodity types and energy types are you offering and which ones would you consider as your biggest strengths? Our biggest strengths are North American power and gas, the oil complex, um, European power and gas. Um, again, the platform is very extendable. So if there's a market that we, that we're currently not particularly active in relatively easy to extend. Um, and then we also have metals capabilities and, and, uh, some other, some other, um, some other commodities, um, you know, for example, any, any of the constituents of a commodity index um, to, to a lesser or, or greater extent. 
So do you offer a real-time position management module and how many trades can you process with that module? So is it real-time or is there a lag in time until it shows on the position management tool? Uh, we have real real time capabilities, um, and I don't know the number of trades. Okay. All right. Do you have an automated workflow or for straight through processing? We have some automated workflows, absolutely. Um, so we have a back office module within the platform, and we have some automation um, to hook into you know some some of the reporting mechanisms. Um, again, it's quite hard to generalize, so I'll say some can your platform solution and uh, the pricing library today price asian options can we price asian options yes yeah okay okay um are you offering a full integration and implementation service for your etrm solution we are so long as the client also is is providing developer services as well so we, uh, we will very much work with work with clients to make sure that we have, offer a full implementation and we'll work with other professional services firms um, and, and you know, make sure that it goes, uh, goes well. So what is the biggest threat for third-party ETM vendors? The biggest threat to Beacon from third-party ETM vendors? Is that the question? No, in general, so what, what do you see? What is the biggest threat on, on, on ETM vendors in general, if there is one from your point of view? Um, well, I suppose you know, not, not keeping pace with, uh, with the needs of clients. And obviously the needs of clients change far more quickly and in advance of anything that can be built by a vendor. So it, it's about being able to, to react and it's about being able to solve tomorrow's problems for, for clients and clients are obviously at an advantage. They have, they, they, they know what the problems of tomorrow are, are going to be far sooner than a vendor can ever know them. Um, and so I think, you know, the, the, the challenge is, is, is being relevant and whether that's compliance and regulatory, which is how it's been for most of the last 10 years, or whether it's around um, pre-trade analytics and, and, uh, and, and trade, um, trade identification, or whether it's around friction and post-trade analysis, you know, all of those things change very quickly. Um, and so I think that the challenge for, for vendors is, uh, is to be versatile. So curious to see is how does your license model work and is it here to stay or is it going to evolve in the future? Well, obviously we listen, we listen to the market, but primarily our license model is, uh, is to provide a site license to a client, uh, to, to install the platform and, uh, and then to have a, a user based fee, um, which, uh, which depends on the type of user. So developers have full access to, to commit code to the platform. That's one tier. Um, and traders and, and quants may have a, a, a slightly restricted access and would, would have a different tier. Um, and then there are modules within that. But, um, yeah, but, but gen generally, site license plus a, a user-based um, constituent um, with, the, with, with, with a support component as well. Like seats or like tiers of user bases? So like, are you... Um, so number of like seats, enterprise kind of yeah, num num number of seats, um, but also differentiated by the type of user. Um, so a, you know, a, a middle office user, for example, is probably just running a few reports. They would pay far less than a developer or a quant who is writing models and committing code. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Last question. Are you offering an API and what is the technology behind it? <laughs> Sorry. And probably very technical again. Yeah, an API. For what specifically? To import and extract data from the Beacon platform, for example. Um, so you to can connect it to other systems. Yeah. Yeah. So that there there are there are a variety of, of different ways that you can hook Beacon up to 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 different things, um, including Excel, for example. Um, and uh, you know, obviously different clients are using the platform in in different ways. Whether that's for uh, integration with with existing in-house or, or vendor vendor systems or uh, or other you know, for example credit modules and things so yes i mean lot, lots of uh, lots of connectivity for for the platform okay well fantastic so we've gone through the speed round i think we've covered um beacon fairly well i i really enjoyed having you on the show today and and as you're aware our, from the insider's guide mini series you know hopefully our audience has gotten a good chance to get a feel for what Beacon brings to the market and your solutions details. Um, any final words to our audience before we sign off here today? 
No, thanks. Thanks very much for the opportunity. Yeah, good to good to talk to both of you, and uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rich. Thank you, Chris. Um, it was a pleasure again. And for our audience, this has been Insider's Guide to Energy ETRM mini series interview with Beacon. Uh, please listen to the entire series. If you want to compare and contrast vendors, this is an opportunity to do so. And you'll find them all on the Insider's Guide to Energy website. Talk to you soon. Bye bye. Thank you.